Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are going to be talking about designer details that make a huge impact. So these are little things that designers tend to do that make a space look a lot more interesting, a lot more elegant, a little bit more tailored, and just really, really beautiful. And these are things that I've noticed that homeowners oftentimes skip or overlook. And I really wanted to highlight these things because they are small details, but they just make a huge impact in making a space feel more dynamic and more interesting and have a lot more personality. Let's get going. Okay, the first one I wanna talk about is beautiful baseboards. So baseboards, oof, they're a little bit tricky, right? Because sometimes it can really depend on the height of your ceiling. It can depend on the size of the room. It could depend on your style or what your kind of personal preference is. But I'm gonna do my best here just to sort of guide you through. Because I think the really important takeaway is kind of no matter what you do with baseboards, they need to be a little bit more interesting than sort of the basic builder grade baseboards that people tend to keep in their home for far Far too long. I personally really, really like tall baseboards. I don't like really small, sort of wimpy baseboards that the builders typically put into, you know, apartments or new builds or anything like that. Usually those are a little bit cheaper and they're just sort of really basic and boring and not that interesting as far as I'm concerned. So personally, I think a taller baseboard is usually a really good idea. It tends to make your space look a lot more elegant and a lot more interesting. So if you have something like eight foot ceilings or something like that, oftentimes you'll see people put in like three inch baseboards, which are quite wimpy and quite small and just sort of kind of sitting there in the corner not doing very much for you. And I personally think you can get away with something like a five, five and a half or even a six inch baseboard. So for example, here in my own home, uh, we have an apartment that's about a thousand square feet. So it is an apartment, it is a smaller home, but our baseboards are six inches tall, which, you know, for some is definitely going to be taller than your average baseboard you're gonna see in an apartment. It just feels chunkier. It feels like it's got more substance to it and it has more presence than sort of these sort of wimpy flat baseboards that you see uh, today typically installed. Now, in terms of style, I will say that the less ornamentation that you have on your baseboards, it's typically gonna fit something of a more modern style. If you like ones that have a lot of like, let's say French curves, and you want like a lot of detail in your baseboards, that's gonna fit someone that likes maybe a traditional or a transitional style, and that may work for you. But I would say if you lean more on the modern side, which of course I do, you can go with something with maybe a tiny little step detail or something like that, or just go with a basic flat stock, that's going to suit something of a more modern style. So there's different variations in terms of style of your baseboard. If you go for something taller and a little bit more beautiful, I think it's gonna go a long way to make your space look more interesting and elegant. And again, it's a small detail. You wouldn't necessarily notice baseboards, but I know I always do when I go into somebody's home. I think it makes a really big difference. And this is also style dependent as well, because I will say some modern homes, especially really minimalist spaces, or even something more like a Japanese Zen sort of interior design style, they oftentimes will have very, very small baseboards, but that is extremely intense intentional to fit a minimalist style. So that's not really what I'm talking about when I say small baseboards. Those can look really great because it's an incredibly minimalist style. Uh, going for something really small can actually also make a really big statement as well. So baseboards are tricky, but the biggest takeaway here is to really be intentional with going with something that is really beautiful and elegant and fits your style rather than just sort of the three inch basic builder grade baseboards that your house came with. Okay, detail number two, I'm gonna say electrical plates and switch plates, okay? So these are the plates that go around your electrical outlets, but they also include things like light switches and things like that. These plates, I think, are really small details, but they can make a big impact when they are done correctly. So here's a couple of things here, okay? First of all, I will say that there are really beautiful, elegant, and expensive plates that are out there that are made of brass. They could be, you know, in like a stainless steel, they could be matte black, they could be, you know, brushed nickel. They are really, really gorgeous and they can be really beautiful and they're usually quite expensive and those will obviously make a really big impact. A really good example of a brand that I love is Buster and Punch. They have some really, really gorgeous switch plates based out of the UK, beautiful, beautiful stuff. But again, these are not cheap switch plates. They are really beautiful. And yes, if you want to go there, that is a gorgeous detail that you can add to your home and people like me will definitely notice when they flick on that light switch and it's this beautiful gorgeous brass plate but I will also just add that these details matter even if you're not going to buy these super premium expensive ones you know the amount of renovations that I have seen or people that have you know painted their walls they've done a whole reno they've really done the whole thing and then at the end the contractor puts on the same faded tan I mean it was white at some point but like now it's like you know what I'm talking about it's like beigey brown dirty gross switch plates and electrical plates and all the rest of these 
These all get put back on from before the renovation. I'm sorry, but if you just put in all new tile and a new shower and new sink and a new vanity and you painted all the walls, why are you putting all those dirty old plates back into the same space? I have seen that a bunch of times and I just think it's a small detail and people go, oh, who cares? It's just an electrical outlet or oh, who cares? Whatever, it's just a light switch or what have you. Yeah, it really does matter. And those things are really cheap subs. You can go and spend a couple of bucks and get those things switched out. They're really, really cheap to switch. Even even if you don't go for something super premium and elegant, which of course is also gorgeous, even if you just go for something really basic, but you know, just switch that out and update it. It's a small detail and it makes a really, really big impact to a space. Okay, the third designer detail that I wanna talk about is the quality of your door, specifically looking at hollow core doors versus solid core doors. So if you're not familiar, a solid core door is a solid piece of wood usually, or it's MDF material with sort of a veneer on top. It is a solid piece of wood versus a hollow core door, which is going to be hollow on the inside. Now there's two main kind of advantages to a solid core door versus a hollow core door and a couple of trade-offs as well. So the first one is just gonna be the feel of the door. It's gonna feel heavier. It's gonna feel like it has more substance to it. If you've ever been to kind of a rental, I've lived in rentals for many, many, many years and they were all hollow core doors. Um, you can sort of feel because you kind of knock on them and they have like a, a ping. They don't feel solid. So the first is just going to be like the look and feel or the feel of the door when you're using it. It's going to feel a lot more solid and a lot more intentional. It's just a small detail that you will notice when you have a solid core door. There is just a feel and a weight to it that is going to make a big difference. The second more practical reason is going to be soundproofing. If you have hollow core doors, it's very easy to hear what's going on on the other side. So if you say have, you know, a large household with lots of kids or whatever, a solid core door is going to prevent a lot of those noises from traveling all over the house, which is really, really nice. And honestly, that makes a really huge difference if you can afford it, because the biggest disadvantage to a solid core door is that they are much more expensive. The other thing is that solid core doors are a lot more difficult to hang. They're usually installation is going to be a lot more difficult than a hollow core door. So that's also something to be considered. I don't think it's necessarily a really great DIY project. Uh, while hollow core is much easier to install, it's usually much simpler than going with something because those are solid pieces of wood, right? Or they're MDF. So it's going to be a lot heavier than those hollow core doors. Now, speaking to cost specifically though, here's my advice. I would say that if you can afford to go solid core, I would recommend it. It really does make a big difference. I have solid core in this apartment and I really do love it. It makes a huge difference in terms of soundproofing. A lot bigger of an impact than you might think if you've only ever had hollow core doors. So I would recommend solid core if you can afford it. It is a small detail and it makes a huge big difference in your home. If you're looking for ways to save money but you really want to prioritize the solid core doors, what I would recommend there is prioritizing areas where it really matters, right? So bathroom, let's be honest. I don't think I need to say any more there. So bathrooms and bedrooms, those are rooms that I think uh, really benefit. Well, something like a closet door, the door to your pantry, less so, right? It's not as important to get a solid core maybe for those doors and you just maybe want to get something that is in a similar style so that people can't necessarily tell. So I would say if you can afford solid core door, great, great way to go. If you can't go with a hollow core, that's totally fine. But again, if you can prioritize some of those rooms where soundproofing really matters, I would say prioritize those for solid core. It's a small detail, but it makes a really big difference. Okay, the fourth designer detail makes a huge impact is going to be cabinet poles and door hardware. So I've talked about this on this channel before, but not for a while, but basically I think cabinet hardware is so important and it's such a detail that people forget because people just sort of accept the cabinet hardware that they maybe picked up at Ikea, which I'm not a big fan of Ikea hardware, but whatever. Or they just, they maybe buy something or they thrift something and then they put it in their home and they just don't really think about it. But honestly, upgrading those handles into something that is really beautiful and sort of speaks to the rest of the design of the room is gonna make a really, really big impact on taking those furniture pieces and just making them a lot more interesting and a lot more tied into the rest of your space. It's just gonna make it feel a lot more cohesive and a lot more tailored to you. It's a small thing, but it makes a massive difference. You know, even going with something like a basic furniture piece, like something from Ikea, but just swapping out and going to Etsy or, you know, thrifting something, going to you know, an antique or whatever, or you can find some really beautiful pieces, uh, maybe at kind of the, the fancy hardware store in town, then I think that can really go a long way towards taking some of those sort of basic Ikea pieces or whatever, sort of uh, maybe furniture pieces that aren't super, super special or not that expensive or whatever, but they really just go a long way with making them a lot more interesting and a lot more updated. And then of course the other one is door handles. So door handles, 
small thing, but they really do make an impact. Going with something in a brass, brass and matte black tend to be sort of the trendy ones of the moment, but if they don't fit your design style, there's other ones that you can use with brushed nickel. You can of course use chrome. That's obviously very popular. Uh, lots of different materials that you can use for your door handles that is going to make a big difference. Something in a gorgeous knurled finish is really, really popular right now. Very, very trendy. Those are things that are really small, but make a huge, huge difference. And by the way, if you're going to upgrade the door handles, consider also the hinges on the inside to match. So if you have a beautiful white solid core door, and then you're deciding that you're going to put a beautiful brushed brass handle, then don't forget those little hinges on the inside, because usually they will come with black or chrome or brushed nickel on the inside. But if you swap those out with matching brass, that's a little detail that you just know that someone who did that is obviously really cares about their home and really had an eye for sort of connecting these different pieces together. Really small, but makes a big difference. Okay, my next designer detail makes a big impact is going to be accent lighting. So if you're familiar with my channel, I've talked about lighting before. Specifically, we've talked about ambient lighting. We've also talked about task lighting, but accent lighting is oftentimes forgot. So this is that little bit of lighting that is used to sort of highlight a different feature in the home. Could be above a piece of art, could be on a stairwell, interior or exterior. And it's these small little differences that are really going to make a space feel really special and interesting. So having a really thought through and beautiful lighting plan makes a massive difference in a home. And usually what I find is that homeowners will oftentimes just, you know, they'll focus on the ambient lighting because they know they need ambient lighting. They may focus on task lighting because they'll go, oh, okay, I see myself reading a magazine over there or, you know, sitting there on my phone or whatever I'm going to do. I should probably have a lamp nearby. That makes sense. Or maybe a lamp on my desk uh, in my office. Okay, that makes sense. But accent lighting... That is that little detail that is really going to make a space look a lot more interesting and a lot more beautiful. And you will be able to highlight interesting special pieces in your home that you want to highlight. So if you go out and you get yourself a gorgeous piece of art that you're really, or maybe you make it yourself and you really want to show it off because it's just beautiful and it just, you want it to really be highlighted in your space, getting some accent lighting in there to really make sure that it pops is going to make a huge, huge difference and create such a gorgeous focal point in your home and really elevate it and make it feel special. So really great interior designers will use accent lighting and they will use it to sort of guide your eye around the space and focus in on the details that are really, really important rather than just focusing on that big light in the center of the room, which is really important, but is not going to really create that really gorgeous lighting that you're looking for in your space. Okay. So next designer detail is going to be ceiling treatments. Ceilings are so forgotten. Ceilings are just that fifth wall that people forget exists. And usually it's not something that people focus on. And I'm guilty of this as well. I mean, I actually quite like my flat white ceilings. I don't think I would change them, but I do think that, you know, there's always room to do something really kooky and really interesting and really dramatic in your space. There's gorgeous moldings that you can do. You can put wallpaper on there. You can do different ceiling treatments that will give texture and dimension to a space while also perhaps giving an opportunity for color or pattern and really sort of guide the eye up and down the space. That I think is what's really important oftentimes in interior design that people forget. It's not just about walking into your space and sort of looking straight across. You want to sort of guide the person's eye around your space and ceiling treatments are a really great way of doing that. So beautiful things like ceiling medallions can be uh, a great way to sort of add interest and intrigue into a ceiling. They tend to fall a little bit more on the traditional side. So if you like something a little bit modern, but I also think that they're beautiful and I think can really be incorporated into any space. But they can really sort of add some interest to the ceiling and really guide the eye up and down the space. You can add wallpaper, you can add color, Color. Like you can paint it. You don't have to paint your ceilings white. You can go really bold and dramatic. You can go black. You can go navy. You can work with the color scheme that you're using in the rest of your space. I think ceilings are so underutilized in design. People don't really know what to do with them. And so they end up just painting them white, which are also something that are really beautiful. You don't have to do anything that's really super interesting and kooky crazy, but that's an option. And I think it honestly is one of those things that people are afraid to do. And so instead they just sort of keep their ceilings white because it's just all that they've ever known. So they've never known to do anything different. But I think it's a really designer detail that does make a space feel a lot more interesting. And I will also add that when I say ceiling treatments, I'm sorry to tell you, but that does not include popcorn ceiling. I know some people like popcorn ceiling. I know. I'm, I was surprised to hear that too, but people messaged me and said that they really like popcorn ceiling. I don't get it because I hate popcorn ceiling. Now, unfortunately it is a 
expensive, time consuming, and maybe even a dangerous option if you don't have the right equipment. So be careful, don't just go in there and take it off yourself necessarily. Do your research or hire somebody to do it for you. Maybe hire a professional, that might be a good thing. But popcorn ceilings, I'm not considering to be a ceiling treatment. That is sort of a really builder grade treatment that is usually there just to sort of cover all the imperfections in a ceiling and to save on cost, to be quite honest. So that is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a ceiling treatment. That is not a beautiful and elegant ceiling treatment in my opinion, but I also recognize that ugh, they're just also something that a lot of people just are sort of stuck with. I've had popcorn ceilings many, many times because I was renting and I really didn't have a choice but to live with it. So I totally understand that sometimes you just can't do anything about those popcorn ceilings, but if you have the option, considering getting rid of them. Okay, so next designer detail I think makes a big impact is going to be molding. Specifically, so we're talking about chair rails, we're talking about crown moldings now, we're talking about panel moldings or applied moldings. You are limited by your your own imagination in terms of what you can do with moldings. And I think they go a long way to making a place look really designer, really customized, and really interesting. These are just a molding that you can apply and you can put them on your wall in lots of different combinations. And honestly, these moldings make a huge difference in making a place feel more expensive. It just feels a lot more tailored and customized to your home. So they actually add a lot of dimension onto the wall, which I think creates sort of really interesting shadows in a space. It sort of plays with the light in interesting ways. And I just think moldings go a long way Way to make your space look a lot more interesting. So sometimes you see photographs of these beautiful, gorgeous designer homes and you think like, what is so special and interesting about those places that is lacking in mine? And oftentimes it's going to be these different types of finishing carpentry, these moldings that are placed on the walls and making a place feel a lot more tailored, a lot more custom and just a lot more interesting. I'll put all the finishing carpentry, honestly, that you can apply onto your wall into this category, even shiplap. I know not, I'm not personally not a massive fan of shiplap because it is uh, tends to fit more into a farmhouse style. Style, but that's just my opinion. Who cares what I think? Because I do think that shiplap actually in a farmhouse style is really beautiful. I think it can be a really great way to add sort of dimension and character to a farmhouse space. So shiplap, panel molding, chair rails, crown moldings. We've talked about baseboards. We've talked about ceilings. There's so much you can do with your finishing carpentry that is just going to really, really make a big impact, make your place feel a lot more expensive, a lot more interesting. And again, these are details that people miss. These are details that people don't notice. They tend to focus on those big chunky things like your flooring and your furniture. We sort of neglect some of these really small details that make a massive impact and make a place feel a lot more special. Okay, that's it for me for today, guys. If you really like this video, I think you might like my video on how to make your place look more cohesive. I touched on some details in that video that I also pick up on this one as well. So I think you might enjoy that one. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.